Hey kids, Tavi Rider here. In this video I'm going to try to prove to you that it's possible to make an instant computer in Minecraft. I've been doing videos lately about instant wire, which transmits a signal from one part of the world to another instantly by abusing a property of pistons, but unfortunately we haven't been able to build anything much more complex than simply moving a signal around. Um, but I think that due to this amazing breakthrough by a guy named Veracity01, uh, it's possible to make an entire computer out of instant wire and have it calculate vastly more quickly than anything you've seen before in Minecraft. Now, to prove that to you and to show you how all this is going to work, I'm, to, I'm going to have to break it way down to the very basics of Minecraft. What you see here are the two fundamental logic gates in Minecraft. Uh, it doesn't get any simpler than this. This is an OR gate, which is simply running two lines into each other, and so if either of the inputs are powered, the output is powered. That's an OR gate. Uh, and the other one is a NOT gate, where you run the line into a block with a torch attached to it, and the output will be the opposite of the input. Now, this is all it takes to build all the amazing things you've ever seen with redstone in Minecraft. All of the more complex logic gates, the latches, flip-flops, ALUs and CPUs, and everything else is based on just these two fundamental gates. We have pistons now, and those are able to do some similar things, but we actually don't need them because these two gates are enough. But there's a major limitation here, and it has to do with this gate on the left. Uh, the problem is that it doesn't update instantly. When I throw this lever, this does go out, but it takes an instant to do so. It's hard to see here, but if I line up seven, in, seven of them in a row, you can see them changing state one by one down the line. And it may not seem like much, but when you have something as complex as an ALU or a CPU in Minecraft, that adds up very quickly into something that's really troubling. I mean, I don't want to take anything away from the people that have made these amazing Minecraft computers, but they are really, really slow. So if I can make a, an OR gate and a NOT gate in Minecraft that behave instantly, then we have what we need to make an instant computer. Well, to do that, I'm going to have to build things up step by step. And the first thing is this concept of having a clocked input. So the cyan wool here indicates a clock signal. For now, I'm going to be controlling it manually, and I have it hooked up to a note block, so every time the clock signal goes from powered to unpowered, it plays a note. And this is just going to go on and off in our computer. Um, the real input here is controlled by this lever. So this piston is going to be going in and out, and it's going to try and strobe this output line, but it gets overridden by this when this lever is unpowered. It keeps this torch powered continuously, and so that signal won't actually get through, and you end up with an unchanging line. Uh, if I instead throw this lever to the powered position, this torch goes out, and the signal can get through. So this is how we control our input to our instant computer. Now, some of you are going to say, well, this takes time. There's a, there's a torch here that has that delay to it, but this is just for manual input. We don't expect humans to operate instantly. We don't need the input to operate instantly. And this is just for demonstrating the gates. If you take another instant wire and hook it up here instead, you'll get um, the behavior you expect. So just for manual control. Now, uh, to demonstrate that this still allows you to do instant wire, you can see when that is off, the clock signal doesn't make it through to the output. And when this is on, the clock signal makes it through to the output, where I have another note block. And the important thing to note here is that the notes play at the exact same time. You can see the little green notes floating up from the note blocks at the same time. And it sounds like a single note. So this is instant. Now, let's move on to an instant OR gate. Um, we have the same clock signal, and as you usually have with clocks, uh, they're used to keep things in sync. And so we have that one clock signal going to both of these pistons, and each one of these has its own manual control. So this is one input to the OR gate, and this is the other input. The OR gate itself is two different pistons that are each trying to pull on the same block of wool. And you can see underneath here we have the torch that powers the wool that goes on to our output. And so if either of these pistons pulls on this wool block, then the connection is going to be broken, and that will pass along the signal to this note block. So right now, both inputs are off, and when I strobe the clock, 
there's no output. If I turn on one of the out, uh, one of the inputs, then our output block does play. The signal made it through, and you can see again it's instant. The notes fly up at the exact same moment. And to go through the other possibilities for an OR gate, both of them on, the output's on, and if just the left one is on, the output is on. So that's our instant OR gate. Great, we're halfway there. Now we just have to get an instant NOT gate. The problem is no one's ever figured out a way to do that. There's no way that I can find or that anyone that I've talked to and challenged to find one, a, a way to make an instant NOT gate just this way. Um, so things are going to have to get a little bit more complex, but to get there, uh, I need to show you one other thing. This is an instant AND gate. It's going to come in very handy in a little while. This is very similar to the other one. Um, we have our clock that goes into both inputs, our manual control of both inputs, and instead of having two pistons pointing at one wool block, we simply combine both signals into this one to control a single piston. Now, because off in these cases means the line stays continuously powered, it doesn't matter if one of these is on and we strobe the clock signal because the other one is going to keep the piston continuously powered and it doesn't move. So to go through the four possibilities for an AND gate, with both of them off, the output doesn't play. With the left one on, the output doesn't play. But with both of them on, they're both going to strobe at the exact same time, so this piston is going to move at the same time from either of these inputs. And our output plays. And again, it's instant. It plays at the same time as this clock signal. And to go through the fourth possibility, if only the right input is on, there's no output. So this is an instant AND gate. Okay, so let's get to the actual proof of concept here. Uh, from now on, I'm going to be using this to uh, be my clock rather than me throwing the lever manually. Uh, I have um, a couple of redstone repeaters on their maximum delay in a little loop. I have this is a monostable circuit that makes a very short pulse that will go back and forth on that clock. And then it goes through this piston and then uh, that passes the signal along and we're going to use the same clock signal for all of these components. We can do that just fine because it's instant wire, it will keep everything in sync. So now we have, uh, this is where things get complicated, so please try and follow along. Um, let me uh, break this off here so we're not distracted by the note block. So what we have is, we have to get things more complicated. A single instant wire cannot uh, do what we need. But if we use two instant wires for every logical wire, then we get what we need. So um, this is a single instant wire or single logical wire. The red, the, the bright red wool indicates the positive input and the pink wool indicates the negative input. So at any time, one of these two must be strobing along with the clock. So right now, the negative one is strobing, so that means our logical wire is off. If I change this input lever, now this one is forced to stay powered all the time, and this one is allowed to strobe, so our logical line is on. So if we break things up this way into positive and negative lines for our one logical line, well, that makes NOT gates very, very easy. You just have to reverse the two of them. So I just have this green wool moving it over to the right and this green wool moving it over to the left. Now, if every logical line has to have a positive and a negative part, our outputs have to have that as well. So I have the regular blue for the positive output and the light blue for the negative output. And I have these tuned to two different notes so you can hear which one is playing. So if I hook this up, Right now, the input line is, uh, its positive line is flashing, so it's on, and the output is off. The only one of the output lines that's flashing is the light blue, and it's playing the low note. So that's our NOT gate. Uh, let's try the other possibility. If the input is off, then the output is on. So it seems kind of silly that it's just moving two wires around. You don't actually have to do this. You can just keep track of which one is which or just change colors of wool if you're using wool to track. But that's a NOT gate. And it's instant. The exact same time that this is moving, the note is playing over there. Uh, I could hook up another note block, but that'll just make things a little more confusing later. Um, 
So, we have our not gate, but we need an OR gate that's also instant, and things got a lot more complicated because we have these split wires. So, let me disconnect that and hook up the next section. This is an instant OR gate. Now, remember each input is two wires, so this is our right input, and this is our left input. Currently, they are both off, and you can hear by the low note playing in the distance that the output is off, which is what you expect from an OR gate. So, if I turn on one of them, the input is on. If I turn on both of them, the input is on. And if I just leave on the other one, the input is on. So, that's what we're looking for. This is an instant OR gate. Now, how did I construct this? Well, I have to give credit to um, Veracity01. This is all his idea, the splitting the inputs and how to make this. Uh, this is my design, but it was his idea, so, that's, so all the credit goes there. Um, to make the, out, make the OR gate, you combine both of the positive inputs, so the two red lines, through the OR gate that I showed you earlier back there. And so if either of the positive inputs are strobing, the positive output will be strobing as well. So that's, we, that's the OR gate, but we have to have two parts. We have to have both the positive and negative outputs. So how do we do the um, how do we do the negative? If both of the inputs are off, then the negative output is on, and we do that using the AND gate that I showed you earlier. We have the negative input from the right side and the negative input from the other side uh, going into one piston, and so there's our negative output. So that's it. I mean, that's really it. We have our instant NOT, and we have our instant OR. Now, I know these look huge, and I haven't really done anything to optimize these. I'm sure these could be made smaller. They could also be made faster. There's different varieties. I was just trying to be as clear as possible for this demonstration video. But between the NOT and the OR being instant, we should be able to make an entire instant computer. I think this will really be impressive with an instant ALU that will be able to do the complex math in a single Minecraft tick. Um, Oh, and uh, for you computer science people, people who have maybe studied computer design and engineering, uh, a NAND gate is the fundamental gate of real-world computers. So here is an instant NAND gate, uh, just to show you how easy it is to do. It's the exact same thing. Let me finish hooking it up here. It's the exact same thing as the OR gate. We just sort of replace, we, we swap around how we combine the inputs. So instead we put both of the positive inputs into an AND gate and both of the negative inputs into an OR gate to get our um, AND. So with one input on, no inputs on, or one input on, the output is off. Both of the inputs on, then we have our output on. And with only one input on, the left input on, the output is off. So that's an AND gate. If you want to make it into an AND gate, you simply reverse the two outputs. You just physically swap them or change the color of the wall. So that's a NAND gate if you want to build your computer out of just NAND gates. So technically, this is the only thing you need, but it's a little easier for people familiar with redstone maybe to use OR and NOT gates instead. So that's everything I wanted to show you. The first person that actually makes an ALU or CPU out of this will be my hero. Uh, I would love to do a video on any kinds of uh, creations that people make out of this. Um, I, and again, much credit, pretty much all the credit goes to Veracity01 for the idea. Um, so stay tuned. I'm going to probably do more videos on this. And if this is the kind of thing that interests you, look for me on Twitter. Uh, look for me on Google Plus or subscribe to my YouTube videos. I'm Tavi Ryder in all three of those places. So that's it. Thanks for watching.